Hey there, Rappuccini's daughter. Let's talk about it. Um, I love this piece. A lot of times my students love this piece. While it is just as dark as some Edgar Allan Poe pieces, I feel like it does feel a little bit more colorful, and I think that's just wonderful. And so, yeah, it still has the kind of bad ending that I love, but I don't know, a little bit brighter. Um, I always picture Beatrice as being green. I have no clue why, but in my mind's eye, that's what I see. Anyway, um, let's talk first about your response question. One of the biggest issues with that question that I have is my students don't know how to fully answer the question a lot of times, and probably because one of the biggest answers I get is that Rappuccini's daughter is a messed up Garden of Eden. And that's, and that's totally fine. I get that. And actually, our narrator compares it to a messed up Garden of Eden, so I get that completely. But when we start looking at that, I find a number of problems, and here's, here's what they are. Um, I can absolutely get behind... Beatrice being Eve and Giovanni being Adam, and we have the Garden of Eden. I get that, but then the problem with that, we have these other two characters and they don't fit into this like God, devil, God, serpent idea. And I don't see one as being completely innocent. I may see one as being completely evil, but not completely innocent. So I'm not 100% sure if I can make that all fit. I'm sure you probably could try and you could probably prove a way to make it work, but I just don't see it a lot of times. Now, if you did your paper on that, you're not going to lose any points at all. Promise, promise. I don't take off points for incorrect answers. You could be dead wrong, but you have to do the response. Make sure you've closely read it. If you closely read it completely wrong, it's fine. I'm not going to take off points. Citations usually where you get hit anyway. Anyway, so um, there's that, and but one of those things with this kind of Garden of Eden, there are some ideas that kind of work here, and one of those big things is you have to say, okay, if this is the Garden of Eden, to what end? What does that mean in the bigger picture? If, if Hawthorne meant for this to be a Garden of Eden, why? And one of the reasons probably because is because he was a transcendentalist, and we know the transcendentalists love nature, and so we kind of have this thing, this dichotomy here, where we have... Nature versus science. We have Rappuccini, who is the science, and then the garden itself, which is nature. And he kind of comes in and perverts nature. And he probably does that most, most specifically through Beatrice. She is the ultimate perversion there. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Now, one of my favorite things to do with my students is to look at the four characters. Um, Rappuccini, obviously, Giovanni, Beatrice, and Baglioni. And we need to talk about who is evil? You know, who, who is the most evil? Who is the most innocent? And there are different ways we could look at it. And so I want to kind of go there. Okay, so number one, obviously I want to care, I want to talk the mo or the least about probably our most evil one, Beatrice. I feel like she, it's, it's a no-brainer, man. Biologically, she is the most evil. No? I mean, she is. However, I think spiritually, emotionally, Beatrice is the most innocent. And I think that's, the, mo the biggest paradox in the piece is, even though really she's the only one who can kill just by her, her biology, she's also probably the most innocent. She's a pawn in everybody else's game, and that sucks for her. Um, now we have Giovanni. Giovanni, is he evil? A little. <laughs> a little evil. Um, probably the most in the way that he kind of tricked Beatrice into thinking he loved her. And yeah, he just tricked her into thinking he loved her, but he, I don't think he really does love her. And here's why. On page 487, or excuse me, 438, um, he's talking about Beatrice, and one of the things he says about her is, it was not love, although her rich beauty was a madness to him. He thought she was pretty. Maybe he was a little lusty. Mm, I just, he didn't love her. And I feel like he did lead her to believe that he loved her, and that's a problem. That's a little evil. Um, but then when he finds out she's poisonous too, he gets real mad. He gets really mad and kind of vanquishes her. He's like, what have you done to me? Blah. He's all mad. So then he also, I feel like the gentlemanly thing to do would be to take the antidote first. Does he take the antidote first? Nope, he lets Beatrice do it, and that ultimately leads to her death. So there are a few little more evil things, like his actions are some of the things that leads Beatrice to kill herself, the most specifically, because she would not have wanted to really be cured, I guess, of her evil, um, unless she had found somebody she really cared about. So, yeah, he's a little evil. Um, do we hate him? 
Not so much. I honestly don't. I just I think he's a young guy who's kind of maybe having his first kind of lusty experience with a lady. I know my brain, but I think that's really where I see him. I don't see him as evil. So anyway, so then we have Rappuccini. <laughs> Rappuccini, I love. He's really not even. He doesn't have many parts in here. But um, Baglioni says on page four thirty-five, he says that. Rappuccini cares infinitely more for science than for mankind. I love, I love that line. I underline it. I always bring it up to my students because I just think it's so interesting. He loves science more than mankind. Can we see that? Yeah. I mean, he didn't make his daughter poisonous. Is he evil? I mean, sure, sure. He turned his daughter into a monster and now she is unlovable. <laughs> and then ultimately she kills herself. So really she probably wouldn't have killed herself if he hadn't made her poisonous. Giovanni kind of led to locally that happening, but globally, had she not been poisonous, none of this would have happened. Okay, so, is he evil? Let's think about his motivations. Why did he turn her into this monster? Why did he do this to her? Part of me thinks it comes from a lovely place. Part of me thinks, He's a dad who doesn't want his little girl to get hurt. He says, if she's poisonous, man, nobody can hurt her. No guy can ever hurt her. And actually, he says on page 450, um, he asks her because she's so sad. He says, is it misery to be as terrible as thou art beautiful? He says that to her. He's, he wants her to be terrible. He says he's taken her from this weak woman and he's turned her into something people fear. And I kind of love that. He gave her power. He empowered her even though that empowerment killed her. Now, with that being said, other hand of that coin is, did he do it because he loved Beatrice or did he do it because he wanted to, he was just obsessed with science? I don't know, and really it's up to you to decide because I think you could prove both points in here. Personally, I want to see him as a good dad. I don't know why I usually look for the kind of, the cynic in me always looks for the bad, but for some reason I'm just like, oh, Rappuccini, he's just trying to be a good dad. and. He actually even, last thing, and I'll stop um, about this, um, he actually even was trying to get a match for Beatrice. And he picked the guy that she loved, and it's not really his fault that, she, that Giovanni didn't love her back, right? No, it's not his fault. So even then, he was trying to make her not lonely in the world, too. So do I hate him? Not so much. Okay, so then... Maybe we might hate him. But then we have Baglioni. Now, personally, personally, he is probably the one I see as the most evil. And you might say, well, gosh, he's like a side character. You have to kind of start looking at this deeply. Pull, and like how he was playing those strings, the puppet strings there. Anyway, so we know at the beginning of the story, Giovanni is moved to Padua um, to go to medical school. And then he's there, he meets this guy, Baglioni. But his parents already knew Baglioni. So Giovanni comes to this place with a place to live already. So if the only person he kind of knew in the town was Baglioni, we can almost assume that Bagli Baglioni was the one who kind of set up this place for Giovanni to live and therefore setting up the whole meeting of Beatrice and Giovanni. Puppet strings, one example. So then, of course, um, he kind of meets, he, ha oh, he has to meet Giovanni the first time, tells him all about Rappuccini and all about Beatrice. And then he runs into him a couple times and always is kind of like harping on this idea that Rappuccini loves science, hates humanity, and that Beatrice is just kind of awful, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then he seems to always have something up his sleeve. And one of my favorite quotes is um, on page the very top of page 446, where he says he wants to foil Rappuccini. We will foil him yet. And I think that's really interesting. Number one, that's a kind of sinister quote. Number two, he wants to foil the guy. And that means basically kind of antagonize him. And so we could say, well, he maybe just wants to stop. He maybe just wants to stop him from being this crazy science psycho. Fine. Or we could say that he really just wants to do something bad to Rappuccini. I'm not 100% sure. And actually, I think that's kind of dubious. Then um, we have something I cannot, I cannot in good conscience get over. And it is the very, very 
last quote on page 450, the last quote of the story, actually. It's great. So, we have dead, dead Beatrice, broken Giovanni and Rappuccini, and then we have Baglioni. And I just listen to this because I want you to, and go back and read it again because I think it's great. So all this happens, Baglioni's up in a window somewhere, and it says, Baglioni looked forth from the window and called loudly in a tone of triumph mixed with horror to the thunder-stricken man of science. Rappuccini, Rappuccini, and this was the upshot of your experiment. Okay, I think probably it's just, you're like, what? This is actually the most famous quote in here because it's just so, it's so questionable because I think it's interesting tone of triumph mixed with horror. So why, why is he triumphant? Did he win because Beatrice is dead? Did he win because he was right and he cured her and curing her from being poisonous meant she had to die because she was biologically evil? Um, hmm, triumph. Or did he just beat Rappuccini? Who knows? So there's that triumph. And then there's the horror. So that, that horror though makes me wonder, did he mean for this to happen? I'm not sure. Personally, I kind of think, I'm not sure, but I kind of think that Bagley only had this whole thing planned out from the beginning. Um, I have reasons for that, but I just think that's so interesting. Triumph mixed with horror. Then, um, lastly, he says, and this was the upshot of your experiment. Ugh, what? And so the upshot of the experiment, the experiment would have been to make her into this poisonous thing. And I guess the upshot would have been her dying. So he's like, and this is what you have to show for the experiment? She's dead. Almost going back and throwing that question at Rappuccini. However, I really do think he was the one who was pulling the strings here. I think maybe it went too far. I'm not 100% sure, but there's something going on. Okay. Um, now, I do want to go back to motive for just a second. Um, Baglioni did have a little bit of motive to kill Beatrice. Okay. Number one, he actually said that Beatrice was super duper smart. And she could have taken his job at the university. She was smarter than him. Mm, so it might be good to kill her. Um, and then he also says at one point, Baglioni tells Giovanni that he was the smartest person in the land, save one man. And I'm assuming that the one man was Rappuccini. So basically, in this whole land of Padua, we have Rappuccini, Beatrice, Baglioni. What better thing to do than to kill one of them and break the other one? I could say he meant to kill her. Not 100% sure. And again, it is triumph mixed with horror, so I'm not 100% sure. But this is why I love literature. If you can back it up, just go to the story, go to the text and say, okay, on page 450 I see this, then you can't really be wrong because it's your opinion backed up with the story. So it's wonderful. So I hope you love this piece as much as I do. Um, and I'll look forward to talking to you later. Oh, one little thing. Okay, so I know my thumbnails look completely insane. I am trying. They just always give me crazy looking thumbnails on YouTube. So I've looked at them week after week and I look like a freak in all of them. I have no clue. Anyway, y'all have a good week. Bye.